this is extension, but it shows where the equation comes from. If we apply a constant force F over a distance D, as shown here in this diagram up here, so up here, um, then it'll produce a torque on this stationary wheel. And the torque is given by tau equals FR, as we learned in year 12, because the force is being applied here. And that is a distance R away from the axis. And that'll cause an angular acceleration given by alpha is equal to tau over I, where I is the rotational inertia of the wheel. And the angular displacement will be equal to the distance that we've pulled the string divided by the radius. Okay, so the work we know is equal to force times distance. But we also know that the force that we apply is equal to the torque that is experienced by the wheel divided by the radius. And we know that the distance that we pull the string is going to be equal to the angular displacement of the wheel times the radius. Because say we unravel a um, 2 pi r worth of string here, then the wheel will have spun through 2 pi radians. Okay, so now we can substitute these two expressions for force and distance into our work equation. The work is going to be equal to tau over r times theta times r. And we can see that these r's cancel. So that's equal to tau theta. All right, but we know also that tau is equal to I alpha. So let's write that in here. So tau, this is our next little point. Tau is equal to I alpha. And so we can substitute that into our equation as well. So the work done is equal to I alpha theta. All right, but we don't want theta and alpha in our equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to define, define alpha in terms of the angular speed gained. So alpha is equal to omega f minus omega i over t. But omega i was 0, so that's just omega over t, if we call omega f, so this is the, omega is the final angular speed reached. Let's get rid of that arrow. Okay. And we also know that theta is equal to omega i t plus a half alpha t squared. Okay, so if we substitute those two things in, then we get work done. In fact, actually, this is not the one that I want to use. I'm just going to use a slightly different kinematic equations. That would work, but it would require an extra step. So we know that theta is equal to omega i plus omega f over 2 times t. And because omega i is 0, we can just cancel that one. So it's just omega times t over 2. So the work done then is going to be i times omega over t, which is the angular acceleration, times omega f over 2 times t, which is the angular displacement. OK. In fact, omega f is redundant because we we were calling the final angular speed omega. Okay, now we see that the t's here cancel. And so we get the work is equal to 1 half i omega squared. So this is the work done to accelerate a wheel, accelerate angularly a wheel from rest to omega. And so this is 
um, i.e. this is the rotational kinetic energy gained.